Cryosolic soils occupy much of northern Canada and are the most extensive soil order in the country. The cryosols have permafrost within one meter of the surface or within two meters of the surface where they display disruption of horizons by frost churning or cryoturbation. Mean annual soil temperature is less than zero degrees Celsius. It is important to remember that permafrost is not a specific material, but instead it is a thermal condition in which soil or rock remains below zero degrees Celsius for at least two years. In Canada, permafrost distribution is related to both latitude and altitude. Although we think of permafrost as a part of Arctic environments, it occurs at high elevations in the Rocky Mountains as far south as Colorado. Since there can be sites where permafrost occurs well below the depth of one or two meters, the distribution of permafrost is more extensive than that of cryosols. At Plateau Mountain in southwestern Alberta, this patterned ground occurs on a mountain summit of over 2,400 meters and indicates the presence of permafrost in the underlying soils and bedrock. At low elevations farther north in the discontinuous permafrost zone, permafrost is restricted mostly to valley bottoms where the insulating properties of peat deposits preserve permafrost. At this site, just north of Whitehorse, Yukon, layers of ground ice have formed in peat, creating raised mounds about two meters high, referred to as pulses. In the Arctic and northern portions of the subarctic region, floodplains with active sediment deposition are the only part of the landscape where permafrost is not continuous. In the lower Mackenzie River Valley, shown here, the floodplain contains mostly regosolic soils on younger sediments in which permafrost is becoming established, while cryosols dominate the adjacent uplands. Cryosol formation involves a group of processes that are related to the behavior of water in frozen soils and in the transition of water between solid and liquid states. These include frost churning, or cryoturbation, that results in a highly disrupted pattern of soil horizons, as shown in this example. Bodies of ground ice can also form in a variety of shapes and sizes, ranging up to meters in length and width. The uppermost part of a cryosolic soil contains the active layer, the depth to which thawing occurs during the summer season. The lower boundary of the active layer is the permafrost table, and at this depth there is often a particularly high concentration of ice, usually occurring in lenses or layers. Just above the permafrost table, there can also be pockets of organic material that have been mixed into the soil by frost churning. In this example, the small pieces of orange tape mark the location of the permafrost table. In the Canadian System of Soil Classification, three cryosolic grape groups are recognized based on the composition of the parent materials, mineral or organic, and the degree of cryoturbation that has occurred. These are the turbic, static, and organic grape groups. The turbic cryosols are the most common and make up about 70% of cryosols. In this great group, the vigorous action of cryoturbation leads to highly disrupted soil horizons and distinctive surface forms. In this example from the Mackenzie River Delta, note the size and shape of this earth hummock with its continuous vegetation cover. In contrast, unsorted circles are unvegetated at their centers, as shown by this example from the northern Yukon. Static cryosols are less common, comprising about 15% of cryosols. These have not been affected by cryoturbation, either because the parent material has been too recently deposited, as in this example from the Mackenzie River floodplain, or because the climate is too dry or the parent material is too coarse textured. Organic cryosols are the third grade group and these are restricted to depressional or lowland sites where peat has accumulated under waterlogged conditions. This example from the Mackenzie River Valley has an active layer that is only 50 centimeters thick. Cryosolic soils have complex distribution patterns, 
particularly in the discontinuous permafrost zone where slope aspect influences local microclimate and the distribution of permafrost. Near Dawson City in the central Yukon, north or east facing slopes have thick surface organic horizons and very thin active layers. At this site, thawing had barely penetrated the mineral soil by mid-July. Such sites support only very sparse and unproductive black spruce forests. In contrast, the south and west facing slopes have no permafrost. Forests are much more productive and the soils consist of district brunosols. Cryosols can be very sensitive to human and natural disturbances. When surface organic layers are disturbed, for example by forest fires, this loss of insulation triggers a thickening of the active layer. After a forest fire north of Whitehorse, Yukon in the late 1990s, ice-rich cryosols in the valley bottom experienced accelerated melting that enlarged these subsidence features known as thermal karst. Similar impacts can be triggered by surface disturbance resulting from construction activities. These thermokarst depressions are next to the Dempster Highway in the central Yukon. The surface horizons of cryosols are very easily disturbed by vehicle traffic because the active layer is at or near saturation. Only a small amount of force or vibration is needed to cause the soil to liquefy.